Hello and welcome to my video. Please do subscribe if you aren't already. So today um, I wanted to talk about something uh, a little bit different. I often say that, but this time it is a little bit different, I think. And that's to talk about balance. Um, balance in our artwork, not necessarily in our pictures. I don't mean that. I mean, in general, in our, the way we, we, we approach our work. Um, and also in our lives, I suppose, as well. I mean, I, oftentimes I think our, our artwork reflects our lives and they kind of go back and forth. So I wanted to just have a bit of a touch on that and to sort of explain a little bit about why I'm thinking about balance. And so in terms of my artwork, what I've been doing uh, this month and for some considerable time, actually, is I'm developing a new online course, as a lot of you already know, uh, called Your Sketchbook Journey. And inevitably, when you're developing uh, something like that, even if you're, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're developing paintings and so on, you can get quite, or I can get quite intensely focused on that. And before you know it, it's a bit like I'm doing this because it's a bit, it's, you know, you're getting this tunnel vision and it's all you're thinking about. There isn't any peripheral vision. You're just kind of constantly tunneling, tunneling, tunneling. And to an extent, that focus is helpful because obviously in my case, I'm developing uh, my sketchbooks, I'm filming that, I'm creating videos, I'm, you know, writing and so on and, and creating this course. And that focus is needed. But what I, when I started thinking about this over the last few days, <clears throat> I was realising that sort of over time, everything else was being pushed away. And so what I was left feeling was um, a little bit sort of overwhelmed with it, really. And I think that that's kind of an important thing that I think we should be aware of, that always I find that there needs to be some sense of balance. It's not just this. It's not just this. There's somewhere in between. And of course, things move. Um, but somewhere in between, it's like a lot of these things. If you go to an extreme of one side or the other, it doesn't feel quite what right. And for me, it felt it was starting to feel very tense. And I actually thought, right, well, this is this is something that I, as I've said to you on, uh, on a lot of occasions, I want these videos that I share with you on YouTube to be real, to be about what it is that's happening. Not something contrived that I think I'll do a little video on, but so, but something that in real time is is happening. And so that's what I wanted to, you know, to do today, to talk to you a little bit, a little bit about this. And to an extent, as I'm talking, uh, my sort of feel it, think my thoughts are kind of unraveling. And so I hope it's not too uh, rambly. Hopefully uh, it won't be because I'll edit it if it is. But in any case, I think what is quite important and what I was really feeling around the art was I needed, I felt like I needed to do some writing for myself. So of course I wanted to do some journaling about the feelings I was having about the work and maybe more generally as well. Um, but also I felt like I just wanted to have a, a play, play, do something that wasn't results uh, focused. Um, and so in a minute, I'm going to share, um, I video myself uh, just doing some exploration with some, uh, my favourite at the moment, some inks and some pastels uh, that I'd started to, to work on during my 100 day project this year. So I thought I'd go back to that. So I will share a bit, a bit of that um, in a minute. Um, but I want to just sort of talk to you about this. So, so I think the, the whatever thing we're doing in our art, we just have to be careful that we, that might well be a focus, but we give ourselves a little bit of a relief as well so that we're a little bit more balanced. So say, for example, if you're just developing paintings and all you do is develop the paintings and it's always about the paintings and you forget to loosen up and you forget to play beforehand um, and you just focus on one painting, you forget that you need to work in, you know, on a group of them so you don't get too tight. Inevitably, the results are not as good as they might be. And it's kind of ironic, really, because in a way you're working harder, but not achieving as much. And I think and that's certainly I mean, I don't know whether it's a watch out for you, but certainly for me, I can over focus if I'm not careful. And that doesn't help me produce a better end result. And it's been helpful for me to realise that at this point in time, as I'm developing this course, to give myself a little bit of freedom in each of the days so that I don't so I can see the wood for the trees. And I think that's kind of important, really, because inevitably to be able to stand back gives you a bit of better perspective on uh, on what you're doing on the work. 
And interestingly, when I look back to last year when I was developing a whole big group of paintings, I did find that there were certain points when I, again, there was this over-focus, lack of balance. I was just trying to get a group finished and I had to step back and make that transition so I could get a wider view on it, if you like. And I think that that, you know, that that happens uh, in our artwork for sure, but also that can happen in our in our lives. We, if we're not careful, we've got we get so kind of caught up, especially with the event of all the pressures we're under. We get so caught up with one thing that we lose perspective. We forget to read or if we enjoy doing that or we forget to take a break and go for a walk. And this month actually has been really useful because what I've been doing this one month is I've been doing some charity, a walking for charity uh, for Dementia UK. And the challenge was to, to walk at least 100 kilometres with your dog. So in my case, Lexi and I have been going out and on average, we've been walking five miles a day. And I'm really happy to uh, to let you know that I've actually got to my stretch target because I set myself a stretch target of 100 miles as opposed to 100 kilometers and as of today we've reached 150 miles so we've done 150 miles which is just about 250 or so kilometers uh, in uh, October so uh, we're both really happy about that I'm ecstatic about it Lexi's like whatever <laughs> but um, yeah it's, 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 it's good and the, the thing about that is that it's given me a little bit of balance alongside other things that I do that might not be as, you know, sort of involving walking. So, you know, I might be going out into nature, but I've been traveling quite a bit this uh, this month because of things that have been going on and because I've done Harrogate Art Fair and so on. So having the walking as a, as a balance alongside the other things is really nice. And I think I think that's the key, isn't it, is, is inevitably there are times where we we can't do everything. We have to focus and that's important, too. Um, I'm not saying that we want to go and do 20 different things, but I think having a little bit of a counter to whatever we're doing. So in my case, whilst I'm being very results focused and developing my course, if I can just do some loose exploration work for me, that's got no, there's no end point. It doesn't have to result in anything that's useful. And the same way it might be for you to have something that is a, you know, a kind of a, a, kind of addresses the balance with whatever it is you're focusing on and the same in our lives anyway I just thought it was useful to have that sort of conversation because I think we can really forget about these things and they are quite important for our own mental health but also for us to get to where we want to get to in our artwork or you know in, in whatever we're doing so I'm, and the other thing I wanted to mention actually before I go is at the end, I want to just share with you something. I want to get your feedback. Um, so we'll see if you wouldn't mind uh, giving some feedback in the comments, that would be great. So this is one of the last walks of the month and we've been doing this challenge for Dementia UK, haven't we Lexi? So we're on our morning walk and we're going along the canal path uh, at lower level, uh, obviously there's a canal <laughs> and uh it's rather lovely it's very still there's been a lot of water so a lot of rain in the last few days but this morning although it's not a bright day you can start seeing some of the gorgeous autumn colors and the leaves and yeah it's just really nice to be out in this and Lexi's a bit uh, exhausted because she's done been doing her zoomies um but she's a bit miffed because when she does the zoom is, of course, the camera isn't on her, so it doesn't record the miles. So her argument is that although in our 30th day of walking, doing the October walking challenge, we have today, this morning, hit our 150 miles mark, uh, which is about 250 or so kilometres. And so our target originally was 100 kilometres. So we've been doing really well and I'm really impressed with her because if you know anything about greyhounds greyhounds are, are sprint dogs as opposed to long mileage dogs <laughs> they're not they're, uh, they're sprinters not marathon runners I should say and so it's really good going and uh, I've been really impressed with her and of course in order to have hit our 150 miles we've been going about five miles a day but Actually, because of the weather and because and it's been quite wet, 
and also because of certain things that were happening uh, this month. We haven't, um, on some occasions, we haven't done very much at all and then we've done huge amounts on the following day. So I'm really thrilled. Anyway, this is just a quick hello and I'll leave it there, but I just thought I would capture some of this on video as it's our 30th day. Okay, so what I have is some handmade paper and I have some inks and some soft pastels and I'm just going to have a bit of a play. Hopefully you can see it. I'm not going to get too... Oh look, I've got a yellow on my brush and it's made mark already. Not going to provide too much of a narration because I'm just going to explore. I just think the, the question I want to ask is um, I, as you know, do a lot of sketchbook work, hence uh, the course that I'm developing. But one of the things I do as well is these uh, Constantinas and fold up sketchbooks. And historically, I haven't ever offered them for sale uh, because I've used them for my work. But I'm now beginning to think that there's an opportunity because especially when I go to fairs or do anything, I often get a lot of inquiries about them. And I'm just wanting to, and I've never really followed up on those conversations. So I wanted to ask you, whilst you're um, here sort of watching me, what your thoughts were on uh, selling uh, these sketchbooks and whether there would be an interest in, in buying sketchbooks, uh, whether they have um, a value to, some, to, to, to you. And uh, yeah, so just, just uh, send me in, you know, let me know what you think in the comments. So the types of sketchbook I have is obviously I have Constantinas, whoops, they're all falling over. Um, so I do these pocket Constantinas quite a lot and um, they're about particular subjects. So they are quite um, much telling the story of the subject. I also do folded sketchbooks and it's just a question really. Uh, let me know in the comments if you can and thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.